Welcome to Building the Future. I'm your host, Kevin Horick. You can check out new episodes of the show every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. If you missed an episode or want to get more information about the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. I'm excited to be attending and recording shows at Rainmaker 2016. You can join keynote speaker Gary Vanderchuk along with modern revenue leaders at the only conference dedicated to the sales development industry, March 7th to 9th in Atlanta. Get tickets now to receive cutting-edge sales content from thought leaders, learn best practices during breakout sessions, and come network with the world's top sales influencers. If you use the promo code BTFS and the number 30, you'll get 30% off. More information is on the show website at buildingthefutureshow.com. I'm also going to be at the Business Rocks Tech, Music, and Investment Summit recording shows live in Manchester, England, April 21st and 22nd, where Steve Wozniak is headlining. More information about the summit is on the show website at buildingthefutureshow.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Sandra D. Robinson. She's an actress, coach, speaker, and author. Sandra, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks. I'm really glad to be here. Yeah, I'm excited that we connected on kind of LinkedIn and and now a few weeks later you're on the show. You have kind of a very, very impressive background. And, you know, before we kind of maybe get into kind of what you're doing now and your book launch, and maybe let's start off and kind of get to know you a little bit and kind of cover where you grew up. Yeah, yeah. I'm from, it's funny to say, you know, talk about my my history, I just sort of laughed. I'm still just this little girl from outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in my mind. Um, <laughs> but that's where I'm just, you know what I mean? So that, that's where I'm from. I'm from Pittsburgh, and I still have family there. Sure. And um, we've spread out a little bit, but I still have my mom, and my sister, and some other cousins and such as there in Pittsburgh. So there's a connection there. I uh, was a super shy kid, which is interesting, because I think like a lot of actors, I chose to go into acting because it was a way that I could be anybody but me. Sure. So the good thing was, and I think for a lot of the really talented actors, um, I really sought to do that 100%. And, right. uh, you know, which made me a crazy thing, I think can make an actor really, really good. I had a long way to go to ever be, you know, absolutely fantastic at acting before, <laughs> but that's okay. Well, but you've been um, in some big I, stuff, so I think you're being a little bit kind of humble. <laughs> no, well, I, I mean, maybe I am because there's always somebody that is more talented than you. I mean, this is award season, so you're talking to me at a time when my, my husband and I are going through movies like we're on this marathon and we're watching these great performances and just really looking at people that devote their life to their their craft. And I feel like I fell into it because it was my survival mechanism. Okay. And I'm so grateful that I am really grateful that I did it. I had a blast doing it and I really appreciate the work. But um, at this point, you know, it's not saying that I wouldn't take a role and I do have some things that are still actually offered to me. And I just have to feel like it works with my greater good at this point. It's not like I'm I'm acting just to get a paycheck. Um, sure. I'd be acting because I think that the 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 project would. It sounds so so like <laughs> I don't know arrogant or <laughs> no, I, I get so it. Typical. Like... I want to change the world with an acting project, but but I think it's possible to create art that really does you know instill something in people that does move people and awaken people. And if it was a project like that, I would do it. You know, I think at the, at the point where the bad thing about me diving into acting as a, as a survival mechanism, you would say is that it took me a long time in a way to gain that confidence. I was taught like a lot of, a lot of us are um, some negative things, which I believe because they came from people when I was growing up, it came from somebody's my mother specifically. She'll never hear this, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but I talk about this, actually, when I speak as well, that I, I was given some really bad information about myself from my mom. My dad was incredible, but my mother had said things over me that I owned, and I owned them when I probably shouldn't have because they weren't true. Sure. So things like life would be better if you wouldn't have been born. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's You know, pretty... kind, of, kind, of, it's kind of low. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's really sad and that's really too bad. But but I think that's also important to kind of share with, you know, um the listener, right? Because you you heard stuff like that growing up and and 
as as much as like I have a daughter of my own and she's only a year and a half and I'm kind of dreading when I have to have these conversations with her and and deal with this stuff but it's a real thing and it's it's really sad but I think why I really wanted or well part of the reason I really wanted to have you on the show is because you you kind of had you know some things said to you in the past that you know you could have really let basically ruin your career or, or life choices and you've basically kind of i would say turned them into a positive thing not only becoming really successful but giving back to people in in kind of other things that you're doing and we'll kind of get into those yeah. later on in the show i think so many that what i'm saying about negative words being spoken over we all have that and it really depends i mean kudos to you when you're already aware of the programming that you can give to your child and, and as i'm parents, trying <laughs> we're, we're gonna make mistakes you know yeah I mean, it's gonna be mistakes um but at least this, what you're aware of what you know you can you can work with you know and i think my parents were older when i was born and I think now the parents, such such as yourself, I think we have more access to to information that we know can be helpful and can be hurtful. Sure. You know, my my mom is going to be eighty nine. Oh, okay. So you know, yeah, she's considerably older than a lot of people that are my age. And, sure. Um, and so when you think about how they grew up, or maybe it would be somebody's parent, grandparents or great grandparents, you know, that's listening. I think. Um, they grew up in a different time. You didn't, if you had a problem, you didn't talk about it. You didn't worry about how to communicate effectively so much in your family. Sure. And we didn't, <laughs> we just didn't. But I think that a lot of people will get messages either from their family or from bullies. You know, bullying sure. is still a major problem. And yep. when you get this information, the way you are raised and the message that you're given a lot of times at home will help you determine whether it's going to really take hold or not. For me, it took hold. And that is why I why I do what I do, um, because I, I love to empower people and help them understand that the, the strengths and the gifts and the design that they are given is exactly what they need sure. to, to accomplish, to have that impact in the world that only they can make. In fact, it's funny. I ran across a, a quote today from Oprah Winfrey. Is it okay if I share it? Cause yeah, of great. course. Uh, I think I put it on on Facebook or or something. I know I put it on social media somewhere today. But I wrote uh, wrote I, what she's written here is every time you suppress some part of yourself or allow others to play you small, you are in essence ignoring the owner's manual your creator gave you and destroying your design. Hmm. Oprah Winfrey. And I loved. It made me. It almost brought me to tears when I thought about you're ignoring the owner's manual your creator gave you and destroying your design, because when you're not living in your full expression of yourself and you're allowing somebody to hold that back, there's actually a pain. And when you come become aware of it, it's a physical pain. You're actually starving part of yourself to not be out there and expressing yourself fully. Sure. And um, so I just that really hit me. So thank you for letting me share it. It's like my favorite quote of the of the year so far. No, no, <laughs> that's that's awesome. I, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm kind of curious, like from Pennsylvania. How did you kind of get into <laughs> acting? Like, move to Hollywood, uh, hope to make it? Like you no, know, there's something to be said about really focusing on what you want. And when I when I started doing these shows um, and I started modeling locally, and modeling to me, I would go in and I would, I had a really hard time with it until I got in front of the camera because then I had, I felt like I could put a character on. Okay, interesting. I could be the happy teenager that they wanted in the in the ad, you know, I, I actually considered that an acting role and I, I made it through that. Okay. Um, but when I had the opportunity from that modeling agency to meet a New York manager, I jumped at it sure. and he met me and he said, and he happened to be down there because he was just starting his business and starting a business. that's very competitive like that in a big city like New York or LA. It's really hard. So sure. he was going around to various cities outside of New York to bring in fresh quote unquote talent. I and he was interested in me. And I went up and I auditioned over the summer. I drove myself up to New York or I flew on these super cheap flights they used to have back then. I can't remember what it was called, it was JetBlue or something like that. But sure. I would, I got myself up there and I didn't, you know, I was just a kid. I didn't have the money or even the, I, I don't even think I knew how to book a hotel room. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I stayed in his office. He lived in the same building, but his his apartment was in a, obviously a separate um, a, a separate 
place. Okay. And I was on a separate floor, but I slept on the sofa of his office and had to get up and be cleaned up and put all my stuff away underneath the sofa before his clients came in. And that was how I was able to go up there and audition. Wow, that's, and I still that's have awesome. Same, isn't that funny? Yeah, that's... I lived out of vending machines. It was pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had a couple of bucks to my name, you know, and I spent everything just to get to New York City because I thought, I'm going to be able to do this. So I booked, I had five screen tests in four months, which at the time, this is how naive I was. I wondered why I wasn't getting a job because they said I was getting close, but I wasn't booking anything. There are extremely talented people that go out to Los Angeles and are out there for years without a first green test. So sure. I think the timing was right. And I think I just had this deer in the headlights sort of naive Tay that must have just read as something really fresh and different because I booked my first job, which lasted for six years. So that was, you know, another world. And I really grew up on that. I booked that that summer. That's awesome. And that projected me um, for the next couple of decades, actually, just working pretty much with only a few months of downtime in between projects. And I worked on six of the six major soap operas as a regular. Um, I think that's more than are actually on air at this point. <laughs> and then I, you know, I had a lot of other shows that I got to guest star on and films that I got to do. And it was a, it was a blast. I had a really good time. It wasn't always making a ton of money. Sure. There were times that were a little lean. And that was one of the things that I don't miss is, and I love to empower people because of that, because I did, I thought that the only thing I was good at was being an actor and taking direction from someone else. Sure. As no, I started to learn about myself, right? Yeah. I mean, cause that's what we do. I, I took direction. Well, that was one of the things that the producer said, she takes direction well, and I prided myself on that, but it also meant that I could stay in my little bubble of not thinking that I was powerful enough or smart enough to think on my own. So some of the choices that I made, like the job of being an actor, actually reinforced some of my negative beliefs until I started to do the work on myself. And as I started to become stronger, I also realized, you know, I could go into producing and maybe producing, I could have a little more power over my income and the regularity of it. Because even people that are super successful will go for, I think John Travolta went 10 years without being employed. Sure. And we think of him as being really talented and great and famous, but he wasn't always. There's 10 years of downtime in there. And the same thing with Sylvester Stallone. He hadn't been at the awards, the Golden Globes. What do you say? He hadn't been there in 40 years. Wow. Wow. There's, that's, there's spans wow. of time. Interesting. There's spans of time at, in that industry where you really just kind of sit there and you you have to reevaluate your, you know, who am I? What what are my strengths? And the more I did that, I've always felt always been fascinated with animal behaviors. So I went back to school thinking I was going to be a vet and got fascinated with biopsychology. So animal behavior, human behavior, the human brain, working all of that and getting certified in different modalities myself because I was just curious about them and how we communicate. And ironically, I end up starting a business, you know, called Charisma on Camera, where I actually can utilize all that stuff and put people on camera sure, and no. help them through the same stuff that I went through. So that's that's how that actually kind of came to fruition. You know, I, I would, someone would send me out on a fan meet, meet and greet okay. and, um, or, or they would send me out if I was on the show um, and I was a lead actor in the show that, especially soap opera fans, they're so loyal. They're so great. They, they will literally follow you to a, a car wash opening if you were going. I that's mean, awesome though. They're awesome. No, it's great. Yeah, that's I'm sweet. so grateful. I'm so grateful. But because people knew that if they had an occasion or a charity or something, they knew they could bring the the soap opera actors in and that people would come. Right. Unfortunately, they would put me up in front of people or put me on camera and tell me to be myself and help the charity or whatever cause we were there for. And I would just fall to pieces. I Interesting. Speak. So, so why, why yeah. was that? Just out of kind of curiosity. Because I wanted them to tell me who I was going to be. Yeah, and when they said, be yourself, I never had any value in that file. Okay, I could look up the character I played at this show and that show, and I had I could zip into all those and tell you all the great things about those characters. But if you told me to tell you something great about me, I would just sit there and silence. See, that that that's completely fascinating to me. And I, I know I think you're kind of maybe downplaying a little bit, and we don't need to cover no, it all. No, I'm but, actually not. <laughs> but, like, just for – I think for the listener – like go look at your like Sandra D. Robinson. Go look that up on IMDb. You've been in a lot of like kind of primetime shows and 
and and a mm-hmm. bunch of other things you know you've done coaching you've done speaking you know like mm-hmm. you, you've done some really really big things and show and been on shows that like pretty much everybody's heard of if they've watched tv in the last you know decade or two right and so mm-hmm. so yeah. I, I think the fact that you kind of struggle with that is kind of inspiring to people that are kind of starting out right and i would even say in myself oh, i'm kind of starting out right and to hear from somebody like yourself and that's kind of what caught me and got me really interested when we when we chatted a couple of weeks ago is you know you're still kind of insecure in in some ways when you're asked to do certain things in front of people and i think that's something that it really kind of spoke up. to me yeah it still pops up but it's interesting because now um the voice that pops up and so now understand i literally i could not i would not go into a room full of people if I didn't know someone in there without holding on to someone that I knew. Interesting. So, and then I would try to make, you know, if I was holding on to somebody, I'd try to make a good game face like I was comfortable, but I, inside my stomach was probably not. So um, I used, as a child, I used to get nervous because we went to Roman Catholic Church, which meant that my mother would sit in the back so she okay. would get credit for being there but could leave quickly um, and be the first one out of the parking lot. <laughs> It's <laughs> true. All right. So she get credit for being there. But the problem was you have to walk in front of everybody in the church in order to go up for communion. Mm. And I would be so self-conscious and such a mess about having to walk in front of people at church that I would start to get sick the night before. Interesting. I mean, yeah, bad. So I think I've gotten to the point now where if any of those little voices that used to pop up and tell me that I wasn't good enough, that nobody's going to believe you, or if I'm about to go speak or stand up at an event and I hear that voice, which is now just kind of more of a silent whisper, I can now laugh at it. That's awesome. Because it's not my, it's not my voice. This is what I tell people. Like, if it's not your voice and it's not God's voice, then whose voice is it? Usually it's someone else's voice. It's a message that came from somebody that had no right trying to impose that on you. Even my mother had no right to try to impose on me that life would be better if I hadn't been born. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> not for her to say. You for know? sure. Um, so you, you go, okay, wait, whose voice is that? Is it your voice because you're about to step off a cliff and get hurt? Is it God's voice really telling you, hey, this is not where you need to be? So you stop and you listen, like, where is that coming from? No, that's a false story that is that's something that's false it is not in reality and then you can put your own you know reality and put yourself up there and that's slowly that's how I built my confidence is really becoming aware of what my strengths were and along the way this is how you can you can encourage people that you run into on a daily basis too I met somebody um a very prominent name and I sat down with him um this is only recently okay and it occurred to me how much I had downplayed my my intelligence because at one point my mother said don't let anybody know how smart you are because you'll never get a date this is really empowering stuff coming from mom right yeah it's true she says um guys don't like smart girls so i downplayed my smarts to the point that i actually started to think that i wasn't very smart interesting and i sat with with um i sat with a couple of folks just in conversation a couple of years ago who actually two of these folks were the first kids to be in the mensa program okay so they started Mensa, which if anybody doesn't know, that's now we look at it as the Mensa society is it's a great thing to, you know, to be included in. It means that your intelligence level is sure. your IQ level is so high. And um, after speaking with them and, and this and that, we had a conversation and, and one of the guys grabbed me and he goes, you don't let people know how smart you are. Because I told them, you know, I said, what's the IQ level for being in Mensa? And they told me and, and I, I'm, I'm up there. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> and it was though. interesting because he must have just, he must have seen the tell, so to speak. I must have been, and I'm very transparent, it's very hard for me to lie. So he must have seen something in my eyes that I was sort of shocked. And as I was leaving, he grabbed me personally and he said, You don't let people know sure. how smart you are. And it occurred to me, yeah, we all, I mean, as much as I learn about empowering others and I know to do that for myself, I still have a bit of me that has to be reminded on a daily basis. Sure. No. You know, that, yeah, you're smart. Yeah, you can handle this. Anytime somebody puts you down, as long as you know and you stand grounded and you own who you are, the good, the bad, the ugly, somebody insults you or tells you, you know, that you're stupid, you can then go, hey, funny that you think that because you're wrong. Yeah. Either to their face or at least in your own head. 
you no, know, you're wrong. No, totally. I, I, I think that that's really good advice. And, and that's kind of, I think, a good segue into kind of talking about your book and the launch of your book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> if you would have told me that I would have this, have a book out like 10 years ago, I would have laughed in your face. When I was really? like, yeah, right. I'll be teaching. Yeah, sure. I'll be coaching people. I'll be teaching and speaking in front of thousands of people at a time. And, and I'll have a book. Right. <laughs> that's awesome, yeah. though. And, so it's true. You, so never, what, you never know what's going to happen. No, totally. So what made you kind of decide to finally write the book and, and what's the book about? I had actually written the book two years before I put it in the manuscript form. It, it, it had already, somebody had said, you need to write a book. And one of these, and, and I, I drank the Kool-Aid when I first got into the business, you know, and, and okay. sometimes when you start a business, you'll see there's gurus that pop out of left and right and there's conventions and conferences you can go to and they all try to get you to spend money because they're going to show you how to make six figures in six months. I got Here's you. the reality, folks. If you're just starting your business, you're not going to make six figures in six months. Nope. It's bull crap. <laughs> no, fair. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> it doesn't happen. But, you know, I went and I, I drank all the Kool-Aid. I really did. And it takes a while to kind of filter through all that stuff. But while I was doing that, one of these people said, you need to write a book. So I put something together, and then I just sat there. Okay. And after a couple of years, but why I did it sit there? That I went into. It sat there because I, I started to get busy working on other things, and it okay. just it happens. You know, you start a project and you write a book, or you you have an idea for an album if you're a singer, and you know you put the songs there, and you just don't actually make it happen. Well, somebody encouraged me to do something with it. It was actually one of my clients, who was a coach who was just producing her, or publishing like her fourth or fifth book. Which at that point, it's kind of like after you have the first kid, you know, the second kid's easier, the third kid, fourth kid, you're like, yeah, go dress yourself and get to school. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, That's know, a good way of putting it. It's, like, it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> so for her, she's on like book five, you know. Wow. Uh, she said, no, oh, it's a big deal. And, and so she encouraged me to get this manuscript out. And I did. And I, I doctored it. And I tried to modernize it. And, and you learn a lot in two years sure. when you're working with people on a regular basis. So this looking back, I... I'm really excited about writing the next book already. Interesting. I feel like there's a lot more. There's a lot more that I want to share um, more in depth. But what this book is, is really the foundational stuff that I share with my private clients. So it's everything from understanding what those negative thoughts are that are, that are put in your head, um, understanding what your real story is. We so often will tell because of the stuff that we are insecure about, we'll tell our story in a way that is very superficial. Sure. And it feels safe. And what I encourage people to do in the first chapter of the book is let's get real with your story. Share the stuff that you think you're afraid to share because that's what's going to make people identify with you. Sure. So kind of like what you were saying here, saying, hey, I identified with you because you said that you had a tough time, you know, feeling confident even now at certain points. I'm like, yeah, sure. No, that's awesome. I work with people just to make that enforce that even more. I work with people that you would know. And a lot of times people say, who have you worked with? I said, you know, a lot of my folks don't want people to think I've worked with them. Sure. And I'm not doing that to be evasive. It's just out of respect. If they haven't given me permission, I don't say, Hey, I coached so-and-so, but there are people that you would know. There are faces that you'd know from TV. A few of them have been in television for decades. And if they go into something new, I had one woman that had been in television and been in front of people since she was in her twenties and she came to me when she was close to 80. Wow. That's fascinating to me. And it's because she was going into something different. She was now not on television. She was selling, she was going on a book tour and had to sell herself. And she wasn't comfortable with that. Interesting. And she wasn't, she wasn't handling interviews well because she kept turning the attention onto all the other people and back to the host and wouldn't take the attention herself and talk about her book. <laughs> so, so everybody has the trigger at any point in their career. They can go off and, and they're going through the same stuff that somebody that's brand new trying to get into getting interviewed or doing a video on their website for their business or just stepping out and doing a radio show for the first time. Everybody has a trigger somewhere no matter where you are in your career in your life. Sure. No, I, I think that's that's super awesome to kind of, you know, tell the listener, I guess, because I think a lot of people are self-conscious to get started in whatever they're trying to, to do, you know, to either like start a business or chase a dream or, or whatever it is. People are just scared to start and it's good well, to what, hear. I'm from... going to turn things around here, Kevin. What about sure. you? What encouraged you? What was the thing that made you say, okay, I know that you said you were a little nervous about jumping into radio. It'd be crazy if you weren't. Sure. But 
what was the thing that pushed you to say, all right, I'm going to do this? Well, I've been trying, to be honest, I've been trying to launch a podcast for probably close to a decade. And the fact that I never had to be accountable to anybody to have an episode ready, I never recorded an episode. And See, so, it's kind of like me with the books. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah, and then but when what the, was the what was your why? Like, what finally got you? Well, I got asked to be on another person's radio show on the station, and they were looking for business owners, and I'm not a business owner. And I thought, you know what? Let's see if they're looking for anybody else to do a show. So I've been ta- thinking about doing this, and I need to be accountable to somebody, and I need to jump in the deep end. And so she passed my contact information <laughs> along. And then a couple of days later, I had a chat with them. I pitched my idea. I had to go through some media training. And then, you know, a few months later, I was recording the show. And so for me, it was, it was I, I really try to do things um, where I can dive in the deep end to get over kind of my own personal fears. And I thought, look, I've been trying for like a decade. And it's kind of, it was kind of waning on me a little bit. And I had a couple buddies launch um, podcasts that were doing really well. And I thought, you know, if they can do it, here's my one shot. I don't know if this is ever going to come to me again. So if I don't do it now, I'm probably going to regret it. So it was a little bit of trying to get over a fear. You know, the opportunity kind of presented itself. And so I thought, you know what, I need to just go for it. And if you listen to some of the early shows, some of them are pretty rough, but whatever, right? They work (laughs) out. You know, honestly, the first show that Jimmy Fallon did, you can tell that he was nervous. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and I remember looking at it going, I can't believe he's so nervous. And mm-hmm. he's the most talented guy to me. Like, he just blows me away. The ridiculous sure. talent that is in this one individual. But, yeah, now he's totally confident and great. And, you know, he's not afraid of anything. But he was – I know. I remember watching it thinking, look at him. He's kind of shaking. Totally. So, I remember watching normal. the first few episodes of him on the late – you're talking like him on The Tonight Show, correct? Or yeah, when he on did, The Tonight Show. Yeah, right. okay, yeah. Yeah, I remember watching yeah. those too and thinking kind of the same thing a little bit. And like, you've been in front of a camera for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Doing things on Saturday Night Live that were really embarrassing. You know, totally. it like for most people, putting yourself out there, doing these characters that were just off, like over the top. And, and so that should seem like nothing. But there's a lot riding on it. And of course, you're going to be nervous and you're going to be second guessing. And all of that just means that like the stage fright and stuff that I help people through, there's secrets in the book about how to get over that kind of thing too. Um, and exercises and stuff that I put my clients through. That's all in the book too. But there's there's something about that that if you don't get a little bit of a tickle in your stomach, even when you've been out there speaking for a while, it, it might indicate that you need to push yourself a little more. You know, that's maybe you don't care about things yeah. where you are. I mean, it's, it shows that you that you care and you want to do a good job and you want to deliver, and that's where that's coming from. So it's a good thing. No, that, that it's interesting that you say that because. Like I'm, I'm a huge music fan, and I grew up kind of listening to Nirvana and 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 Dave Grohl. You know, now he's in like the lead singer of the Foo Fighters, and he's he's obviously played in two of the biggest bands of all time. And he, he's been yeah. quoted saying that he still gets nervous going on stage. And you're like, really, dude? You like, you know, you've played thousands of shows all over the world. You're you're one of the richest, most popular musicians of all time, and you know, you still get nervous. It's kind of a fascinating thing sure. to me. Yeah. Yeah. So there's tons of stories like that. And, you know, also I have to acknowledge too, that you said, if I don't do this now, I might miss the opportunity when somebody asked you to do the radio show. And my, my husband works in the film industry and we're, we're working on, on a bunch of things for him to step out in, in a bigger way and, uh, and, and share his message about how to get over fear and, and how you deal with fear in life and things. And one of the things that he came up with, which I just love, he says, you know, at the end of your life, when the end credits roll, would you have lived life to the fullest? Yeah, it's a good way to put it. And so when you're like, hey, I may never get a chance to do this again, that was your motivation. That was, yep. the, okay, you know what? Looking back on your life, will I think that I could have done something with this? Well, you won't know until you try. Totally. So, yeah. No, I, I so, think that's awesome. When... So I'm kind of curious. So, so what's the title of the book and, and when can we get the book? The book is called Impact, Secrets to Powerful Presence on Camera and Off. So if you just remember Impact, okay. and my name, Sandra D. Robinson, you will find it on Amazon. And the official launch date, you can buy it now on Amazon, but the official launch date, we're doing an official celebration. And that's going to be today between 1 and 3 p.m. Pacific time. So obviously, East Coast, we're talking 
three, no, four to six p.m. Right, we're yeah. at four to six p.m. East Eastern time, three to five Central, and one to three if you're in California or Western United sure. States. And during those times, if you purchase the book Impact by Sandra D. Robinson from Amazon, at those times. I will be able to send you either directly through Amazon, they'll send you a link, or you can send me an email confirmation, Sandra at Um, But they will be able to send me a link, and I'll send a free video training on interviewing. In other words, how to master an interview. So get out there in 2016, even if it means being interviewed by somebody locally, being interviewed at a, a conference in your hometown, just get out there, get words out of your mouth and let people know what you do. It's it's really important, I think, to understand what makes a good interview so that you can deliver it and you can get your message out and stay in control of your brand and how you want to come across. And a big part of that is knowing who you are, of course. So that's covered in the video training I'll send. And then I'm also going to send another little tool to help you get all the tools together that you need. So if you want to step out in a big way this year and get interviewed as much as possible, I make it super simple by using a desktop file. And I'll tell you what to put in that file so that whenever you do book a radio show, like I booked with you, you can just send off, hey, here's all the stuff that you as a producer will need. That's and awesome. It really helps things go smoothly. Yeah, it's it's a great it's a great tool. And I didn't even for me, I took it for granted until I started to share it with my clients. And like, oh my gosh, can you send that again? And I'm like, oh, all right, this has some value. So I'm going to include that for anybody that buys the the book Impact um, between one and three Pacific time today. Sure. No, that's Pretty awesome. Cool. And so you get like a fifty dollar fifty dollar training and 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 the extra bonus just for buying a twelve dollar ninety five cent book. No, that's awesome. Yeah, and j- just so people yeah. know, like, because this show will um, rerun and as a podcast, the show actually airs mm-hmm. January twenty eighth, um, twenty sixteen. Yeah. Just so people know the the date. Yeah. Um, so yeah. no, after the twenty eighth, if it, if this is if it's afterwards that you're listening to this, you can still get the book. The sure. training is just going to be sent out for that day, but you can still get the training on on Charisma on Camera website. It's there and it's available. Um, but um, the book will be available from the, from today on. Yeah. No, that that's awesome. Um, so I, I'm kind of curious. You kind of have what, what fascinated me about kind of when we first talked is just all the kind of like tips you were even giving me and advice and just you know all these like stories and kind of inspirational things that you kind of have been kind of mentioning even on the show already about just you know people being kind of insecure in their own ways and having these kind of triggers mm-hmm. and and stuff. I, I'm just kind of wondering if you could maybe share some tips and advice for people that are that are looking to maybe kind of get out there a little bit more, whether it's networking or talking or just kind of being, I find it awkward personally, even just going to networking events and talking to people and trying to be myself. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> let's, let's address that. Sure. That's perfect. Because <laughs> um, even if there's people sitting there going, and I, I'm hoping that if they get the book, they will then be convinced to go step out in a bigger way and do video and, sure. and do interviews. But if they don't, um, or if they say, hey, I'm never going to be interested. I don't need to do that, but I do have to go out and network, and they hate it. Well, sure. Networking is, is something I think a lot of people struggle with, and that was one of the things that I had a really hard time with when I when I was young, and I, I started – I left acting for a little bit, and I went into the corporate world, which I made money at. Um, <laughs> and at one point, I was doing the corporate job, and I was also on a soap opera at the same time. That's it was funny. a very weird time for me. Uh, yes, um, made money at it, but there were a lot of lessons that I learned. And part of it was this whole thing of walking into a room where you don't know anybody and having to introduce yourself. And I looked at it because I was so self-conscious. I looked at it from how am I coming across point of view? Sure. Now, that's what makes people most uncomfortable is how am I coming across? Totally. What I try to have people do is get really set in your strengths, what you're delivering, who you need to deliver it to. And then walk into the room with the attitude of who can I serve and not in a way that you're trying to enroll someone as a client or as a patient or a customer right then and there. Just walk in and go, who can I help? Who's, let's give people story. Walk in and with two things in mind, find out who somebody is, not what they do. Finding out what somebody does is the biggest cop out in the world. So if you walk in and I'm sorry, I'm going to get tough right now. Oh, I'm interested. If you walk up. Right. If you walk up to somebody at a conference or networking event and you start the conversation by saying, so what do you do? 
Okay. If I see you, I will personally drag you outside <laughs> and tell you to start over. What you have just done is, and we all you've heard it a thousand times, and, and you will still hear it a thousand times over. But when you ask somebody, what do you do? You put them into a box. Okay. Right? You have now taken a step back, emotionally disconnected from them, and asked them to place themselves in a box. Okay. Oh, I am a will be their answer. I am a insurance agent, real estate agent. I'm a business coach. I am a attorney. I am an accountant. Well, the second that they say I am a, the recipient, which is most likely you, is going to have this reaction of, well, I don't need that. It's mm. a subconscious thing, and it's a way for us to help work our way through the crowd until we find somebody that we think we need. It's not the way to start a conversation and make an emotional connection with somebody. Walk into that room thinking, I want to find out who somebody is, and I want to find out how I can help and support them. Okay, so you walk up and you ask a question, any other question, before you ask them about their business. Say, hey, what's the best thing that happened to you this week? You don't have to ask them their name first. Interesting. Okay, that's good advice. So, I, right? Yeah. yeah. Walk up to somebody. and I walked up to somebody. I, I did this for a while ago. So what are you most pass- passionate about, sir, with the blue, with the blue tie? You okay. know, I mean, I'm kind of funny about it, but... I'm kind of funny about it. And, and they just look at me kind of, you know, they kind of laugh and they go, well, um, and they'll answer you because we are so, we're so refreshed by somebody that wants to see us as opposed to our name tag. Mm, the worst introduction you can do is walking up to somebody, staring at their name tag and trying to see what their name is so that you can then ask them what they do. Yeah, that's totally it's a good advice. It's awful. It's uncomfortable. Walk up and ask, just get to know people, get their story. So what's your story? I would even start with that question. What's mm-hmm. your story? What's the best thing that happened to you today? What's the funniest thing that happened to you this week? Sure. What's the best thing that happened? You know, and anything. Just get get somebody talking. Say, hey, if you could go on vacation tomorrow with money not even being a problem, where would you go? That's interesting. So, okay, so Think- they – and you've had pretty much – it sounds like you've had pretty good positive response from that. And then you, would usually people follow up with kind of the same question back to you or kind of how does that well, go? It, yeah. You know, it starts It starts a friendship. It starts a relationship as opposed to a – Like a, a potential business deal? Like superficial words. Yeah. That's yeah, a good way of yeah. putting it. Yeah, but a, a potential business deal – business deals are made because of relationship. Totally. Success is built on relationship. Yep. So if you are not asking the right questions, you're not going to get the right answers. Therefore, your relationships are not going to be as strong. So if you walk up and you ask a question that's going to put somebody at a distance already, why not make a better choice and ask a question that's going to help you know who they are? Couldn't agree more. Because may be a printer, right? Yeah. It may be a printer, but if they're a printer that shares a passion of fishing and you love fishing, you now have a good buddy. Sure. No, right? I, that's a really good way that, to put it. Right? And if and if they if this good buddy of yours just chatting there at a networking event about the, the latest fishing says, hey, what's your radio show on again? And you can say what the topic is. And he goes, hey, you know what? I have a CEO that might be great for your show. You never know how totally. things are going to come to you. But building relationships is the number one skill that you can work on if you want to be successful. No, I, I 100% agree. And I'm I'm working on my in-person networking. But for me... Mm-hmm. I've been networking through like LinkedIn and Twitter and other kind of social sure. media platforms for a number of years. And that yeah. LinkedIn, I would say LinkedIn, I've gotten pretty much 90% or probably even 95% of the things that I've like gotten in my career, you know, including this radio show from networking yeah. on LinkedIn. Like just that alone. You know, I did the same thing. You can do the same thing on LinkedIn. Yeah. No, totally. When somebody, and, when somebody connects with me, I, I hop on and I'll give. You know, you, you have the rope. You can say thank you so much for connecting. Yep. I try to. I, I look. On, I look at them. I find out who are they. What can I find? It's different about them and unique. And do they have a cool picture? Do they have a phrase that I think is funny? Do they? Do they invented a tagline that I've never heard before, and I comment on it. Sure. Well, that's how you and I met. We probably would have never met. Yeah. Like I'm up in Canada. You're in Austin. Probably never yeah. run into each other. <laughs> Not so much. You know, I've been to Austin <laughs> no. twice, but it's a big place. <laughs> yep, and so is Canada. <laughs> exactly, right? So, you know, the chances of us, you know, and even if we did, we, we probably wouldn't talk. Like, I don't know, like if we saw each other at the bar or wherever or down on the street, it's not like we we're going to randomly go up to you, right? Like, you don't think I'd look over and go, hey, yeah. you, I'm going to buy him a drink. <laughs> really? I, yeah, you're... <laughs> Well, but, you you know, I, but I think, like, that's the whole idea of this whole thing. And that's 
you know, the thing that I love most about doing the radio show is the fact that I get to meet and talk to people all over the world. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. yeah. It's so like, I, it was one of yeah. my favorite things. I've hosted a radio show as well. Sure. And, and it, it is one of the coolest things. I used to, I remember just hanging up the phone going, I just talked to a biologist in, Arct- in, the, in the Arctic. Like, that is so cool. Yeah, like, you know? <laughs> exactly, right? I think that's yeah. fascinating. And yeah. I think the other thing that I'm, I'm kind of curious about, and I've never really personally done it, but you've done a lot of kind of like hosting and speaking. You, you must, like, I guess the question to you is kind of, that must help even networking because when you're in front of everybody at the conference or event or, or whatnot, and you're walking yeah. around kind of later, everybody just comes up to you because, well, they know who you are because, well, you were you know, hosting the thing in front of everybody. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's, that's the same as, as with the radio show. So it's one of the reasons why I want to encourage people to step out this year, step out bigger than you did last year. Do do something that really pushes your comfort zone and just, you know, maybe do the, the personal work that you need to do in order to own everything that you are before you step out there so you can be successful, but don't procrastinate anymore. The more that you're in front of people and accept an interview, whether it's a podcast, a webinar, even a teleseminar or something, take that opportunity to be interviewed and get out in front of people and then spread the word. But there will be people that, that see you when you speak, even at small events, you know, Chamber of Commerce event. They say anybody that wants to speak this year, put your hand up, get up there. Because there's a lot of times I spoke with a woman this morning, a, a client of mine, and I asked, and this is a great thing to do too, ask your clients and ask the, the people that follow you in your community. And if you're on social media as, as well as you are, um, Kevin, and doing, you know, working it like you are, you can do this. You can say, hey, somebody help me out here. I need to know what is your biggest struggle in business? What is your biggest struggle sure. with whatever it is that you're next in? And I got a lot of people that felt more comfortable emailing me personally. And one woman, brilliant woman, says, I, I am okay sharing my knowledge because I know it's super helpful. I'm okay sharing it when people ask me. Sure. But it's hard for me to feel like I'm, imp- I, I feel like I'm imposing on them or being too forward by stepping in front of them and an offering. And I said, but the pe- fact is, if you don't get up in front of people, even in your local networking group, and explain why you do what you do, who you're looking to work with, they may not know. And I said, sure. she works on relations. She has, she does with relationships and helping people with communication, which is a super valuable, I mean, like what we were just talking about, sure. super valuable tool. And I said, do you realize that a lot of people, A, don't know they need you, which mm-hmm. is great for everybody. They don't know that they need to get on a radio show. Totally. They don't know that they need whatever it is that your expertise is. You, you have to educate them and say, hey, by the way, if you have this problem in life, I can help you with it. And then they go, oh, I need you. <laughs> right? Totally. And the other thing is they may be afraid to admit that they need you. Like in her case, she's talking about relationship issues. They may not want to say right away, hey, I have a problem. They may not want to say that in public. So you have to earn their trust. You have to get up in front of them and show that you are trustworthy and solid and you're not going anywhere. And eventually when they feel comfortable, they'll, they'll, they'll walk up and, and they'll ask. But you, you have to go first. No, that's, you got to go first. That's, that's interesting. So we kind of covered it briefly that you kind of coach and, and train people. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of Maybe do you want to kind of cover what type of things that – you you kind of just work with people. I know you kind of mentioned them throughout the show, but like yeah, let's cover well, the, exactly what that is. Yeah, the the like for instance the book uh, the the tagline on the book impact is secrets to powerful personal presence. And really, what I do is it's some people have labeled me the charisma coach, That's which good. I sort of laughed at at first, but I was like, all right, I'll take that. Yeah, okay. it's not bad. Um, it's just it's not bad. There are worse things that I could be called. Sure. Um, it in essence, it's really helping people be powerful and present and and really taking every opportunity whenever they need to step out, whether it's on video or whether it's public speaking or networking, or to be quite honest, I take what I do into companies and I work with sales teams okay. so that somebody who is a young salesman can actually own who they are and develop their presence at a point that they can build relationships quickly and build rapport with people quickly from an honest and authentic and very natural place so that those sales teams will become viable to the company a lot sooner than the previous teams because they're walking in with the with the skills of number one knowing who they are and then being able to communicate effectively and not just with the trained 
you know, canned responses and, and arguments and objections and things that people are taught to do, but really coming from a place of trying to understand another human being and building a relationship and a friendship through that and building the business from that way. So that's what I do. And I work with people privately. I work with groups and um, I speak to audiences of, of all different sizes and love to work with companies of all different sizes. The bigger, the better. Sure. Um, and usually the private clients are people that are looking to make a difference in the world. I really click with people that have the ability, the, the need, that, that why that is going to leave the world in a better place than they found it. Well, that, and that's, cool. that's why I love to do what I do because if I I like to be the catalyst that holds that place for them so that when they come in with some in- inhibitions yet this big wall this big pool that I can help connect that I just hold that for them and they can connect it and then they step out in a bigger way and I've seen people come in with a, a goal of hey I need to do a video blog to get the word out about what I do and end up hosting their own television show that's awesome because once that it's cool. I mean, once that freedom comes and you totally. have that freedom of expression and people start reacting to it in a positive way because you put it out there in the most healthy, natural, and authentic way that feels good to you. I mean, let's face it. If, if you feel good, people are going to be attracted to you. If you feel like you're holding back, if you feel like you're trying to be somebody else, if you feel like a fish out of water, things may not go, be going so great. So it's my job to make you feel fantastic and and really get the message clear and get out there. Sure. No, that's awesome. So do you usually, I'm sure it's kind of a little bit of both or a bunch of different things, but do you usually like, obviously you work with companies in Austin, but if I'm in another city, do you fly to me? Do we do it through video chat or Skype or combo of both? A little little both. Okay. You know, a little both. Yeah. I'll work um, usually with companies. If I'm working with groups, it's, a lot more effective sure. for me to be flown to wherever they are. Um, and I would say, you know, even when I was in Los Angeles, about it got to the point where I think 98% of my clients were virtual. So we work with a, the webcam and we, we use a program that I can do playback and I can play videos on YouTube. And it has worked to be really, really effective. And it's funny because in Los Angeles, I still had a lot of clients that were in the city, but it's so hard to get around Los sure. Angeles <laughs> and my clients are really busy. <laughs> so in order to get anywhere, it's like an hour there in traffic, an hour back, and then you never know, you know, if there's going to be an accident, you'd be sure. caught even long. So if, if I was working with a, a doctor per se, you know, it was just easier to do a video chat because that way we know we'd start and end on time. Sure. There was no commute. There was no, and it was a green option, which, you know, being an environmentalist is always feeling better to me anyway. So Sure. So it worked out great. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome. So how do you like I, I guess kind of how do you kind of start off with a new client or is it really kind of depending on what they're looking to learn or, or get over, I guess? It the first thing I do is find out, interestingly enough, like I talked about networking, I ask about them. I find out what what motivates you, what's you know, where'd you grow up? I just, I, and my main, I mean, I want to be totally transparent with it, but when I talk to somebody that's a potential client and I ask them personal questions, mm-hmm. I wait to see what lights them up. I'm listening to the excitement in their voice, the passion in their voice. And then I say, so do you have any videos? Like just say, if, if we're working on a video presence for them, I say, do you have any videos that you've done? And then I know what they're, you know, I can kind of get a sense of what their natural energy is. Okay. And sometimes, most of the time, when people are uncomfortable on video, they shut that energy down. Okay. It drops. Sure. A lot. And so, if I were to just, you know, send them an email and say, well, send me some video that you've done and, and do an evaluation from that, that's not giving me an indication of who they really are. And that's the problem. Interesting. So, I look for what lights them up. So, if they light up when they talk about, uh, their kids, if they light up when they talk about their dogs or being outside or hiking or travel or food, then I know, okay, even if their business isn't food or travel related, there's a, there's a flavor there in their life that has passion and excitement. So I know they're capable of it. Interesting. So it, it really just about everybody has something in their life that lights them up. And if it just so happens that you're I work with one company that sells flooring. Okay. And it's so funny because the manager that brings me in, we have this phrase, we both say, we're like, okay, we want you to be passionate when you go in and you meet your your potential clients. But if you are passionate about flooring, 
we're going to send you off somewhere <laughs> because that's not what we need you to be passionate. We need you to have passion in your life and share it. You know, Fair. it's not necessarily that you're super passionate about what you do. If you are, you are very, very lucky and, and go with it and share as much as you can. If you have a business that you, you know, it's like, well, it's my business is a means to an end. If, if that's where you are in life, I'm not saying you need to drop it and go do something else, but Maybe at some point you would, but for right now, realize that that job or that you know that thing that you're doing, the business that you have at the hand, is actually something that can be fueling something that you're passionate about. Whether it's a cause or or something that you want to build another business, or if it's if it's just a movement you want to get involved in, maybe it's actually just sharing through your business, maybe a dry cleaning business, share through your business what excites you and really celebrate that with with your people if you have a love of music for instance you can infiltrate that into just about any business Interesting. and share that invite your clients go hey you know what i'm a big fan of music and what's funny is when you start being authentic in your marketing and in your networking and just saying um i i'm a i i love you know i'm a musician on the side and i love my business of whatever being an accountant okay, okay. so people that are in your circle as an accountant you can go ahead and share with them, hey, this is a great concert this weekend. I'm going to be there in the back at Table 5. If you want to join me, you know, it'd be great to see you there. We can have a couple of beers and listen to this great jazz band or whatever. Put it out there. Be, don't just be an accountant. Be or, or a dry cleaner operator or a, a banker. Be somebody that people want to be around, that they look to for advice. And, and when they're comfortable sitting with you at any kind of venue like that, if they have a banking question, they're going to come to you. Sure. It, it's it's part of getting out there in the community. Yeah. Or if they have a referral that they can give you, they've been hanging out with you and they know you. There's a sense of knowing you. You've built the community around yourself. You shared your passion. So my biggest advice to the people is, is that. Share your passion and yeah. let people know what you're all about. The more you put yourself out there, and let people know who you are, the more likely you're going to attract people that you literally, you want to be around. And nope. isn't life better if you have people that are your clients, your customers, and, and your, you know, the people that you're, you're helping, if they're like you, totally. I hate to say that, but it's true. Oh yeah, for right? sure. No, that's, that's great yeah. advice. And Sandra, sadly, we're out of time, but this has been very awesome. Like I, I love the it's advice fun. and the tips and, you know, it's it's awesome that you kind of, you know, decided to do a book and that you're helping people. And, you know, maybe let's kind of close the show with you promoting kind of, again, book title, where you can get the book, sure. um, find yourself online and any other social media or websites you want to promote. Yeah, you can always, you know, the, the easiest way to find me is Sandra D. Robinson. That's Sandra D. like the old actress or like Grease which I hated growing up, but now I'm grateful for it. Sure. Sandra D. Robinson. And if you Google that, Sandra D. Robinson.com comes up. So that's an easy way to find me. You can find me on all the social media networks as well. And I, I respond as much as I am able to. So I am responsive on just about all of the platforms, including LinkedIn, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. awesome. and Facebook and Twitter and all of that. Um, the book is called Impact. You can find it at the websites at Charisma on Camera at Sandra D. Robinson.com. You can find it on Amazon, which is probably the easiest way for most people to go on there and just pop on Amazon and buy Impact by Sandra D. Robinson. And that's, um, that's hopefully going to help people get out there and empower them to step out in a bigger way in 2016 and do things that maybe they were afraid to do or holding back sure. in the last couple of years or so. So let's, let's make a difference in 2016. Awesome. I'm glad we did this. Thanks for being on the show. We'll be in touch. Thank you. And, uh, you know, this was, this was great. All right, Kevin. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. Have a good night. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the show. I'm also going to be at the Startup Expo in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, February 16th and 17th, recording shows. The music for the show is done by Electric Mantra. You can check them out at electricmantra.com. Until next time, keep building the future.